what's going on guys my gendy costumes here today i am introducing a new video idea slash series idea i don't know what i'm gonna do with it i'm probably gonna put it into a series because it would make more sense because i wouldn't be able to do it all in one video otherwise it'd be one long ass video so i've had a lot of people request for me to do this where i literally just make a car and explain what i'm doing while i make the car now i'm also going to be continuing the z modeler basics tutorial just so you guys know how to use Zmodeler and it's always there if you need it. Now in this car I'm going to make, I'm going to make reflective liveries, bobble head antennas so they wobble around. I'm going to go through the car coals and everything. So this is going to be one long series to make but I will try and get it done and actually finish it. Unlike a lot of my other series. <laughs> so if you guys like this idea please 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 hit that like button and subscribe. It really does mean a lot to me. We are so close to 2,000 subscribers and the support has been insane and I really, really appreciate it. Now, what I would do first when I'm making a car is figure out what car I want to make. Now, for the sake of the tutorial, I am going to make an unmarked pack and then release it on my Discord for sale for people to use and buy them. So, first I'm going to do a Dodge Charger, then I might do an Explorer and then add a Tahoe, so on and so forth. But anyway... Good places to find bases if you have not seen Z Modeler Basics 2.a uh, 2a sorry that is where I get all my parts unless they're paid parts which you would obviously get from the uh, the person you're buying from. However, if you go back to that video, it's going to be on screen now. Just click the card and it will show you all the sites I use to get parts. Now I'm going to get the base. I'm going to do an 18 Dodge Charger first. The best place you can find an 18 Dodge Charger base is modding form. Once you're on modding form. I would go over to forms, once here, I go to development resources. And then we have to scroll down a little bit, I think it's on page 2 at the moment, and we download this, Pelter's 2018 Dodge Charger Pursuit Vehicle. Now the template is here, if you guys want to template it, however I am running unmarked, so I do not need a template. So we are going to download it by clicking it, and here we have the, the, the WinRAR file. Now, one big, big, big thing I'd recommend when you get into modeling is organization. I have a whole drive dedicated to modeling just so I have my stuff stored. So what I would do is I'd make a folder on my desktop and call it unmarked pack. So once in here, I would make a folder called assets and a folder called vehicles. This just gives me some sort of organization and it isn't all clummy like clumbed in and just you know clumsy and just messy it also makes it much faster when you're making a vehicle and it's just it just it's it's much easier you know where things are and everything's organized now obviously inside of the vehicle section we would put the vehicle here it is dot dodge charger 2018 pursuit now we'll double click this and inside of here we have loads of different things now not all of the vehicles you get will look like this However, we have stuff like this, which is the CWGV file, and then you have the maters that you can use like here. This has a custom line and whatnot. Anyway, if these got if, if the model you download provides vehicles maters and car variations and whatnot, make sure you use them because they're there for a reason. And then here we also have the texture file in case you want to edit any of the textures individually. And then finally we have the YTD. Now the template isn't on this charger as you can see, it is on the website under template. Alrighty, so first thing I will need to do if I want to make this car, I need to figure out whether I want it to have all-wheel drive or rear, rear wheel drive. I do not like the all-wheel drive wheels, so I'm going to go with the rear wheel drive. Once you've done that, open up Zmod, and once you have a blank canvas, just drag and drop it in. Now as you can see, this is what it looks like. Now on this particular model, you'll see that it has two paints. The roof and the doors have a different paint to the, the bonnet and the bumper and the fender and the trunk. That is because you have a primary and secondary paint on this model. Now you can change that on this model by doing the following. Setting up your views, which I like to do is to front to the top left, top to the left right, left to the bottom left, and 3D or user depending on what I need it for on the bottom right. Now, what I would do to fix this issue is I'd make a material. So you go to the material browser here, click new, name it body shell, square brackets, paint one. Once you have done that, you go up to the little Pac-Man logo here, go to vehicle paint and vehicle paint free. 
Now, vehicle paint free is very, very important if you want to have multiple liveries. Now, once you've done that, you want to go into here and under detail, you would like to put the vehicle generic small spec map DDS there. Under detail two, you would put the template. In this case, it is right here. So we will download it and put it onto the desktop. I'm going to call it 18 charger underscore sign underscore one. Okay. So then we're going to add that into the file, into the texture browser, sorry. Right here, here it is, 18 charger underscore sign underscore one. We click OK on that. Scroll down. The mask, if your car has a custom dirt map, then you want to use that. I know this one does for a fact. Here it is. And then that's it. Once you've done that, you want to select the whole vehicle. Click on polygon mode. Click in the window somewhere. Deselect the whole car. Click by material, select the two paints that your current paint is currently applied to. In my case, it's paint one and paint two on the small spec map materials. And you will know you have your whole body selected. If you hide it by going up here and click hide, you'll see that all of the body shell disappears. To get it back, just press show, go to properties, polygons, and under material, click that and find the material you just made. And there you go. As you can see, the car is now got that all does the same paint with the template on it. So a lot of frequently asked questions I get is why does the car only have one wheel? Now I ain't actually a hundred percent sure, but I, do, I think, you know, I'm not even going to tell you why, cause I'm probably wrong. But the thing is wheels, they only show one because the dummies take over for the others. Oh, and it would only show two if you have, let's say, jewelies on the back and only single wheels on the front. So it's always a different scenario or a different case depending on what vehicle you have. Now, the first thing I want to do for this lot, this vehicle is put a visor bar in. Now, where I would find a visor bar is around the place of LSPDFR. I'd say there's usually quite a lot of good visor bars on there. There's also, again, places where you can go to buy visor bars. Is that visor bars such as CEO? He is a great, great, great dev and he does a lot of good stuff. He has a very nice visor bar. Now, if we go to resources and assets and go to light bars, we can scroll down here and look. Okay, so after scrolling down, I've decided I want to use Frost 88 Slim slash Stealth Visor Bar. I like the look of it and the emissives, and I think it looks really stealthy and slick, as it says in the title. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download that. Okay, so once I've downloaded it, we're going to go over to our unmarked tutorial pack and we're going to go to assets and we're going to throw that in there so we don't lose it. Once we have done that, we go back to Zmodeler, click merge, find where you saved that visor bar. And then click on the Z3D provided. And here it is. Here is the visor bar that I just downloaded from LSPDFR. Now, we are going to select this whole visor bar by going to select, hold R, select it by dragging and holding right click over it, like that. Go to move, and make sure you have your police vehicle selected in the hierarchy down here. Move it on the Y axis as it needs to be lowered a bit, and just drag it down. Now, as you can see, it is too far outwards, so we need to move it up in the Z axis, or we could go into the top view and move it up in the Y axis, like so. Okay, so now we can see that the visor bars are actually too big for the vehicle. So we can see as these are actually, um, these are fictional visor bars, I believe. I'm not 100% now. We can just scale them down a tad just until they fit in the car just right. Okay, so once we get one side to fit, we can separately move the other side so it isn't a big deal. Okay, so as you can see, it needs to be rotated in order to fully fit the car properly. So what I'd recommend in this situation, if you need to rotate something on both sides, 
is I'd recommend deleting one side of what you need to rotate i.e. I'm going to delete the left side of this visor bar by going into polygon mode clicking on it and then selecting it if when you select the whole entire other side and you click delete and it doesn't delete that means that the thing that hasn't deleted is its own element in the hierarchy in my case this is ELS4 so here we see it in ELS4 here and we're going to right click edit and delete okay now we only have the right side of the visor so now it's going to be much much easier to rotate and fit this visor bar into place so to rotate this I'd recommend going onto your rotate tool make sure you have all of these enabled and selected put X and Y on and go to your Y axis and then we just click and hold until we get it to the rotation we want now that looks just about right so let's move this forward a little bit more and as you can see now it needs to be rotated on the X and Y axis on the front view because it is too straight for the bend of the top of the windscreen if you can see so now we're going to go into the front view with our X and Y axis selected on rotation on and we're just going to rotate it downwards a little bit and there we go that looks like a good fit we're going to move it back just a little bit as you can see it looks like it still needs to be rotated on the X and Y axis on the top view so we're going to do that Gonna put it forward a little bit more by going back to our move tool. Needs to be rotated a little bit more. A little bit more on the X and Y axis. And perfect. I like how that looks. Probably move it along on the X axis on the front just a little bit more. Rotate it X and Y on the top a little bit again. It's all trial and error, so you need to get it nice and right so it fits. And there we go. I like the look of that. Now I know what you're thinking. It's only on one side. How are we going to get it on the other side perfectly as well? What you want to do is you want to copy this by selecting all of it, go to create, click copy and then you want to go to flip and then mirror and then once you've done that now I know what you're thinking it's only on one side, how are we going to get it on the other side with making it look, like making it look the exact same in rotations as well so what we're going to do to do that is we're actually going to copy it and flip it so how you do that is you just you select all of it by going into quad R on select like I showed you earlier selecting the whole light bar and then go to display reset to world click on the window somewhere reset to parent click on the window somewhere and then this one here which is the center to local axes and again click on the window somewhere make sure you don't have auto selected down here in the bottom right otherwise it will not work which happened in my case just there okay now once you've done that you can make a copy by going to create copy and click somewhere in the window you'll see that it makes a copy of everything that it has selected and then you want to go to modify and on the left view window you want to click on mirror and click in the window somewhere make sure you have these settings open for mirror and then click on the mirror tool and as you can see there is a problem with that mirroring and the problem here is that the center of the world is not in the center of the world this is the world's pivot point and this should be right in the center of the world and the only way i have found to fix this is to save your work and restart the modeler which is what i will do right now as you can see i have now started restarted z modeler and the center of the world or the pivot point of the world is now back in the center now we want to delete these items here that we copied because they are not properly mirrored so we're going to select the visor bar again click create copy modify in the left view click mirror and then click display reset to world reset to parent send to local axes and then in surface you want to go all the way over here to surface go to normals and click calculate normals and then just click that multiple times now if this still comes out to look flipped 
what you want to do is try and click the reset to world reset to parent reset to axes again and then click to calculate normals again now if it is still not exactly how it should look like you want to just click flip on your z modeler and then click display reset to world reset to parent reset uh, center to local axes and surface and then calculate normals like that now the only issue that we are having now is that once that, that both sides are red and we need one side to be blue obviously now i'm going to make the left side blue and how we do that is we make sure we just have the left side the uh, lights and misses selected <coughs> right i'm gonna stop you right there tom uh i did forget to mention in the recording guys i'm editing this watching back and i just want to say that that is a very complex thing to do uv mapping for new people to learn it it is quite complex so if you have any problems or questions with it let me know in the comment section below and i will try my best to fix it for you like this and then what we want to do is you want to right click click mapping edit uv keep old mapping force material onto mapping default material go all the way to the bottom and then find whatever light bar you're using underscore emissive or underscore ems or light whatever it is it should be something along the lines let's click on that and then make sure you have from viewport xy selected and then click ok once you've done that you want to go to a window you're not using i.e at the moment it is my front window click on it click uv mapper and down here you should see material click that and then you should see whatever you forced the material onto just click that and as you can see i can select this mesh like that with quad r move it down on the x-axis onto the blue maybe scale it down a bit quickly so it doesn't clip with the red or the yellow and boom as you can see it is now blue perfect now if we click show all L0 you'll see that you can't see the light over the windshield now there is a quick and easy way to fix this and that is just drag down your police car in the hierarchy below the lights you've just installed and as you can see you can now see them now next episode what I'm going to be going through is how to put these into game with non-ELS and give them a nice custom pattern I hope this episode has helped you understand how to you know put lights in mirror axes all that good stuff now like i said this is going to be a tutorial on how i make a car and how i would go through it and you know how i do it personally obviously every different modeler does it differently to how each other does it um i'm showing you my way and i'm trying my best to go as slow and as explanatory as possible to you guys uh, I'm going to try and upload as much as I can on this. I know I've really, really been slacking in uploads recently, guys, and I'm so, so sorry. Uh, I'm going to try and get the second episode out soon of this. And if you really do like the idea of this, please hit the like button. It tells me that you are enjoying it and you, it does help you. And it really helps me going. It really keeps me going on YouTube, especially in times like this. Anyway, guys, I'm McGinney Customs. I will see you in the next episode. Peace out.